Hello everyone and welcome back to my all-country tour in Microsoft Flight Sim where during the Olympics and during Twitch live streams I flew over every country on the planet. Uh, we are beginning on August 9th in my recounting of this. I didn't go through the long way through every country. I nicked some corners in some cases but I did try to get everywhere including the Maldives there. I was checking on that particular node uh, to divert away from the Indian coast to get to the Maldives but yes I covered, as far as I know, every country on the planet flying the F-111 from Aviasim HD slash GKS because it was fast. I would love to do this sort of flight in a little Cessna or something, but I do not have the time or money. So uh, if, if you guys would provide me with the money, I'd be glad to do it. Anyway, so here I am taking off from Dubai. And so departing the United Arab Emirates headed to Oman. I make the turn at dawn. And that is the beginning of the 20th flight on August 9th. And this flight was 3,394 nautical miles, 3 hours and 9 minutes heading to Calcutta. So here I'm flying by Muscat. And I believe some things have been named Muscat. Muscat grapes or something like that? Anyway, uh, heading across to Pakistan. I covered Iran on the way towards Europe. And now on this way, I have to cover Pakistan. I also covered uh, Afghanistan on the way towards Europe. And so here, flying by Karachi, or flying over Karachi, and making the turn over that city at the mouth of the Indus River, and then turning towards India. We'll be landing at Calcutta, so uh, I'm just going along the coast of India here towards Bombay, cruising here at over two times the speed of sound, and at a great height. Partly the goal of this was to scout out where the scenery was good, where the photo scenery was good, and where it was patchy or not so nice. And there are some surprising locations where the scenery is actually serviceable that you might not expect. Um, you know, like in a continent like Africa, even though a lot of it is not so great, uh, there are places where the photo scenery is quite nice. So I was able to get a sense of where those were as we pass by Mumbai, formerly known as Bombay, I still sometimes say that, but Mumbai. And I don't have great scenery at Mumbai. I did in X Plane 11, I had special scenery for Mumbai, but I don't have it here. As at Mumbai, I turned towards the Maldives. I actually flew over Mal more of the Maldives than I had planned. I was originally aiming for a more northern island, but ultimately flew further south than the original plan, but they were sort of nice, they're cute little islands down there. And then finally I made the turn towards Sri Lanka. As mentioned before, uh, this plane at this speed has a very wide turning radius, about 40 nautical miles, so to do a U-turn it's 80 nautical miles, which covers some countries as I reach the coast of Sri Lanka here. Sri Lanka definitely does not have the best textures, unfortunately. And then I head north towards Calcutta along the eastern coast of India. Departing the northern coast of Sri Lanka here. Which doesn't look too much different from the western coast. I could have held out hope because this is closer to the Indian portion, but no such luck. Alright, after a long trek along the eastern coast of India, I approached Calcutta. And then I came in for landing. Wings spread out again. Nice and slow. I do like swing wings. They are so elegant once they spread the wings out. And then so quick looking when they have them swept back. Of all swing wings, I like the B1B the best, but uh, it's not as quick as this, of course. And the version that's available didn't really meet up to the same standards as you see the interior of the F-111's cockpit here. It's very, very nice. and. Uh, as I understand it, uh, the same group has released a MiG-25. I'm interested, but I might wait for a sale. And also, Flight Sim 2024 is coming out, so I'm not sure I should be getting any more planes for Flight Sim 2020. I sure hope that it is as easy to modify the planes for Flight Sim 2024 as has been claimed, but I do recall that that claim was made for X-Plane 12 as well from X-Plane 11, and a lot of things did not get updated between X-Plane 11 and 12, so I'm a little bit worried. This is the next flight uh, from Calcutta 
all the way down, actually to Singapore. I stopped at Singapore. Originally I was planning to stop at Brunei, but I cut that short due to time. And so this will be a somewhat shorter flight of 2,880 nautical miles, 2 hours and 36 minutes, also on August 9th, because I was doing two flights of these length, this length on the same day, trying to get it done while the Olympics were still going on. Uh, I decided to cut this one a little bit shorter. Cutting it shorter meant that I was able to make sure that we flew over Mount Everest and do so at uh, not so quick speed. It'll still be quick, but at least not as quick as it otherwise would have been. It'll allow me to target Mount Everest properly as I head north into Nepal here, or approaching Nepal right now. Here we are over Nepal and the clouds cleared. I thankfully didn't have to adjust the weather for that. And we see the peaks of the Himalayas in front of us. And there are some peaks here, but actually uh, Everest is still in the distance. And it's on the border between Nepal and China. So these peaks we pass by, and then it's that one. Uh, well, the tallest among those, obviously. <laughs> So that's Everest, and then I continue to make my wide turn and eventually turn back towards Bhutan. But getting a good view of Mount Everest and its glaciers. Technically over China right now. And then now over Bhutan. The clouds, well, Bhutan sort of has this mysterious feel anyway. It's not like we were going to uh, see the Chamra Bhutan from this height. So, yeah, having a sort of a mysterious cloud covered mountainous Bhutan is probably about right anyway. And then I turn towards Bangladesh, which is the mouth of the Ganges and Brahmaputra River at Dhaka. And here I turn towards Southeast Asia. So they're departing Bangladesh. And sorry, there's sort of like a catalog of countries, but that's basically what it is. Uh, it is proof that I did this grand adventure because eventually the original flights, and probably already most of the original flights are going to be deleted from Twitch. I wanted some record of all of this. And here we are over Myanmar. So that's what this is. This is just a record of having done it. I have witnesses. It was a live stream. No crashes. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily no incidents, but no crashes. The sim was remarkably stable. I didn't have to restart any flight or anything like that. The game, I don't think, ever crashed. Uh, I did have a stream drop off, but that got recovered, as we are now over Laos. The F-111 was a pleasant plane to fly. And now crossing over into Thailand. The ground texture is definitely not good. <laughs> this part, uh, Tha uh, uh, Southern Thailand has better luck, as we see here approaching Bangkok, but over in Thailand and Laos definitely do not. There's Bangkok for you. And then Cambodia. Can't go straight to Singapore, no, we have to go with Cambodia and then Vietnam and then towards Malaysia and then Singapore. Malaysia technically I'll get a second time once we head to Borneo. We have to go to Borneo because of Brunei. Textures here over Cambodia still not great. I mean I'm not expecting photogrammetry or anything here but it is interesting where they got good textures for, for instance, Somalia looks great, <laughs> but uh, but then again, desert sort of looks great even without as much quality, maybe? I don't know. I felt that it had better quality than Cambodia. I can't imagine that they did, like, detailed flights over Somalia, so... Anyway, this is Vietnam, and I was trying to verify that this was, in fact, the Mekong River that I had on the map there, but it didn't have the name there but I, I think it was. So Ho Chi Minh City there and then turning south to or southeast to Malaysia as you see on the Sky for Sim map there. Handy uh, for the purposes of this flight that uh, was very useful 
I prefer a different one for hurricanes because this one doesn't actually show the wind direction and there's another one that does. But these map plugins are very nice and Sky for Sim is for free. So I do recommend it. And then heading towards Singapore. So this is over Malaysia right now. I didn't fly over Kuala Lumpur specifically uh, in the interest of time. And of course we wouldn't see much detail anyway. Singapore we see detail because of course I'm descending over it. And so a very nice scope out of Singapore. Could be better though. Uh, there's a lot of buildings at Singapore that are neglected by the stock scenery, but uh, there is add-on scenery, a uh, Sam scene scenery for Singapore. I do wish more attention would be paid to the city by the default game, but anyway. There's also a seam right there in the photo scenery, which is sad. Alright, approaching WSSS, the very substantial airport at Singapore. And so this was the conclusion on August 9th. Now the Olympics went until August 11th. And so the next flight's on the 10th. So I had to do two flights on the 10th and then two flights on the 11th. Uh, this is the penultimate video. The next video will deal with the second flight on August 10th and then the two flights on August 11th to conclude it. All right, parked at Singapore. And then the final flight for this video, the 22nd flight overall is from Singapore to Micronesia, PTPN there, and I picked that one because it was a handcrafted airport, I think, from the Pacific Islands update. The Pacific Island update gave us a lot of things that I wish were gotten for other places in the world as well. But anyway, I made use of that handcrafted airport there. You can see 3,562 nautical miles going from Singapore uh, to Indonesia, the Borneo part of Indonesia, there's a lot of Indonesia. We'll actually fly over Indonesia again when I have to uh, fly over Timor-Leste, uh, or formerly known as East Timor, uh, on the way back from all the Pacific Islands. So we will get more of Indonesia, but we're only getting a little bit at Borneo here. And then I'll be flying again through Malaysia, which is on the northern part of the island of Borneo on the way into Brunei, and then to the Philippines, to Palau, an island nation, and then to Guam, which is not an independent country, it's a territory of the United States, but did participate in the Olympics separately, as here we are over Indonesia. Just a little bit of Indonesia, there's a lot of Indonesia. And then crossing over into Malaysia. But yeah, since Guam participated in the Olympics separately, I tried to get those countries. I tried to get everybody who participated in the Olympics and every country. So Vatican City did not participate in the Olympics, <laughs> which it would be funny if they did, uh, but uh, it, it, I still flew over it because it is a country. So got both sets of things or tried to. All right, so that is Brunei. Sultan of Brunei used to be like one of the richest people in the world, but now it's all like tech people or I guess the CEO of Louis Vuitton or something like that. Uh, interesting people at the top there, but back in the day I remember the Sultan of Brunei being at the top of the lists. Now over the Philippines, throughout the flights, uh, during the long ocean legs especially, I played GeoGuessr on stream to just kill the time, frankly. Uh, I have two monitors and I had the flight on one side and then GeoGuessr on the other side and I did enjoy the Philippine locations quite a lot because uh, they have very distinct features that made it easy for me to recognize them. Anyway, Palau, there we go, I made sure to get Palau. Don't worry, Palauans. I hope that's how it is said. But uh, Guam? Yes. They even got Guam. Congratulations for participating in the Olympics separately. I don't know exactly why you do that, but <laughs> it works. works for this flight. Lots of airports at Guam. All pointed the same way as well. They are all decidedly east-west. And then turning towards the Federated States of Micronesia. Let's look at Guam. A full look at the island from this side. 
and yes, Federated States of Micronesia, and I picked the one location PTPN, of course, because it had a long runway, and also because it was a handcrafted airport. So coming in, otherwise Micronesia is a lot of atolls. And there was a cloud right in front of the runway, just for me. But cleared up well enough before I really had to worry about it. Throughout the flights, I was using little nav map on my second monitor just to be safe and sure. No point taking any chances on a flight like this. Okay. And touchdown. So. PTPN in Micronesia, the conclusion of a 3,562 nautical mile flight on August 10th, 3 hours and 10 minutes. I'll give a total tally at the end of the next video, which will be the conclusion of the entire thing. Uh, but that is a, sort of a nice little place here in Micronesia as I come in for parking. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.